Welcome to Something Special Designs by Tina Williams, where I create cottage, French country, shabby, and farmhouse decor, all with thrifted items. Sit back and enjoy today's video, and if you like it, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Hi everybody, this is Tina. Hope you're doing well today. Our first project is I am going to be making over a cabinet door. And what I'm doing now is I'm making some clay molds with the uh, IOD trimmings too. And this is the cabinet door. It's a uh, black cabinet door. I bought a, a whole bunch of these at a yard sale, believe it or not, for 25 cents each. And I could have bought more. I should have bought everything they had. But anyway, this is a, a pretty large one. And I am basically taking that flat part of the door around it. And I am putting uh, this one mold, a trimmings mold, um, all the way around it to add some definition to kind of make it a frame and give it, you know, a little bit more of a, uh, a frame look. But anyway... I'm just basically piecing it all together and I'm gluing it down and all I'm doing is using my uh, quick and thick to put it down and after I've done all that and I let it dry overnight um, I am taking some uh, DIY paint old school and as you can see I have some cracks everywhere I, I did not paint this uh, last night when I let it sit out. So it did have some gapping. But I am going to make uh, some salt wash with the old school. Basically, I'm taking salt wash. You could use baking soda. And what I'm doing is I'm mixing that right now pretty thick. Because I am going to fill in those gaps with the salt wash. Um, you could definitely fill it in with clay. But I have found that I've done this before and it works really well. In the end, you will not even see those gaps. So I'm just taking it. I'm going to fill in all those little gaps. And it, you know, I'll let it sink in a little bit and go back and redo it. And I'm also going and doing the corners. Anywhere where there's a gap uh, that I might need to fill in. I also take that salt wash and I'll kind of go around the edges. Like if there's any lifting of the mold I'll do that also and and I'll go I'm going to take this salt wash and go kind of around the perimeter of the uh, the, the entire uh, cabinet door but I'm not kind of going in the middle with it I will later but I will thin it out quite a bit because I don't really want it that thick in the middle I like the texture around the edges because um, I'll be using several waxes later on on this and I always feel like the salt wash even if it's a light one it grabs the wax more and it I don't know it just gives it more depth so I'm not going to be using the salt wash on the trimming because I don't want to lose that definition um, except for the gaps that I was trying to fill in and that usually uh, it does it usually always works but I go around the edges sometimes the mold will lift up and you'll have these gaps around the edges so I just take that salt wash and then it kind of just makes it all look like one and to me that always works a lot better than just um, you know just the paint by itself so now what I'm doing is I had thinned out that salt wash a lot I put quite a bit of water in it and I'm going through the middle I'm just trying to go over the whole middle portion and trying to make it a lot smoother at some point I take my mister bottle and I missed it and that usually smooths it out and as you can see and I also went over with just the old school along the edges so now what you see is I am using the new IOD molds and that one is the uh, what is it called Gosh, I don't know. Conservatory labels. And we're going to be using just one of these today. 
and I'm using some Jovi Air Clay. Before I was using DOS, I used either one of those interchangeable. I haven't tried the IOD yet, so I really can't say, but I think both of these work well. I had a problem. I usually get it uh, online of getting the DOS, so I tried the Jovi, and I'm, I actually like it. So if you haven't ever tried it, I think it works really well. So I put some cornstarch in my mold, and I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, press it in there. And I always just, you know, scrape off the excess. A lot of times I use my brayer to kind of smush it in there. But, you know, it just, I want to make sure that I get a lot of definition in there. And there it is. That's the, the new, that's one of the labels. I love them. So I do two of those. Uh, because for our project, we're going to need two. And you can see them up there. I didn't. And then now I'm using the IOD Olive Crest. And it has kind of a label in, in the middle of it. I have used it so many times. But that other mold that I just used kind of reminds me of it. But we're going to do one of those. There's something about working with clay that I absolutely love. If you haven't done it get it it's a lot of fun so there's all three of them and that's what we're going to use and now I'm using the new IOD from the spring release apothecary labels and if you haven't got this oh I love it I absolutely love it the stamps in it are great um, in case you don't know guys I do junk journals I have another YouTube channel that I do junk journals this is going to be great for that if y'all do anything like that uh, it's just, it's a fantastic set of stamps. It has letters. It has all kinds of labels, smaller labels. Uh, two sets of letters. It has Roman numerals and numbers. So it's just, it's great. So today what we're going to be using is we're going to be using Roman numerals. But I'm just showing you what's in it because I think it's a, a fantastic set. It comes in each little packet. So I'm using Roman numerals, and I don't, there's no rhyme or reason to what these are. I just picked the ones I thought would look good. So I just uh, stamped an impression with the stamp. I'm not actually using ink on these. I just want the impression. So I have three of them now. And I'm going to let those dry a little bit. And in the meantime, I'm going to go over my board that I had painted with the old school. And I'm just going to take some Dixie Belle uh, top coat, the clear coat flat. And now I've moved on to my label. They're not completely dry, but I let them dry enough to where they're like a little crusty. And I'm going over all three of these with some old school, the DIY old school. So after they dry pretty much, I'm going to go and top coat those as well with the clear coat. Now these are these molds, these uh, castings are not completely dry, but this they're pretty dry. So now what I'm doing, guys, is I have three uh, different hanger things, and they're made out of iron. And I bought these a while ago at Hobby Lobby. I mean, years ago, um, when they were on clearance, but they still sell this kind of stuff. And they weren't that expensive to begin with, like two ninety nine, three ninety nine. So I think I got them for like a buck a piece, but you can still get them for half price. And what I'm using right now is Modern Masters Metal Effect. And it is copper. And I am going over these. I have not primed them. I have not done anything. And you can see it takes it very easily. You do not have to use this stuff over metal. Uh, you can watch some of my previous videos. I've done it on other things, glass or whatever. And you'll see later I use it on other things. So I'm just going over this with one coat of this. The way this stuff works is you're supposed to use two coats. Uh, you do one coat and then you let it dry and then you do another coat. Okay, so now that we have done uh, those and let those dry, those hangers dry, I'm coming back to, I'm going to start calling it a frame because I think it looks more like a frame now. 
and I am taking my Modern Masters uh, copper and going over all the trimming that I had put on there. And I'm just doing that. I'm not doing any other part of the frame. I'm just doing the trimming. And I'm using a bigger brush in the middle and then um, I have a smaller artist brush that I will go and do the edges to try and even it out. And it really honestly does not take that long to do this. So I'm going to go over the whole thing. And um, I do two coats on this too. I let one coat dry and I come back and do the second coat. And the, the you, you're supposed to do two coats in order to activate the solution. They have a patina solution and it says to do two coats. Now I have done it with one coat and it does work, but not as well, okay? So anyway, I'm covering this whole thing and um, I will let it dry and then go over it and do it again. Now I am using a wipe here. Because we put the uh, clear coat down, I can do that. And here you can see I've used a little brush to go in all the edges. So after I do my second coat, I take my uh, patina solution in the blue and the green. I mix them. That's the green. I just did the blue. And I'm going to go over this and um, let it set. I think I let it set for like two hours. A lot of times I just do it overnight. But that is just going to set and uh, get its patina. And you'll see the magic later. So now I'm going over my uh, hangers or hooks or whatever you want to call them. This is my second coat. Now what's really important about putting your second coat of these patinas on is that you have to spray it with the solution while it's wet. So I spray it while it's wet and I'm going to go let it set. So now I'm going back to my labels that we did. And I am going to put a coat on there. I will let that dry and then I will go do a second coat and then put the patina on it. All right, so now I'm showing you the new IOD release, uh, Joe De Roses. And the reason I'm showing it to you is I was going to use this on this project. But I changed my mind and I decided to use the Floral Anthology. And I'm showing you that. And the reason being is I have another project in mind for the uh, Joe De Roses. So now what I've done is I've picked out what I wanted to do and I'm trimming it as, as much of the white off as I can. And I'm trying to decide how I want it, which is honestly, this can go either way, I think. So I'm going to put this on and we're going to fill it all up. I know it takes me forever to decide. Y'all, you, you guys, I cut out three fourths of the deciding stuff. You would go absolutely insane if you saw it all because it is, it's horrible, 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 horrible. So after I finally make up my mind, I go ahead and I start it and I basically take part of it and put it down and then I remove the rest and just kind of flatten it down with my hand and then I start rubbing with my transfer stick. So it's pretty easy. Uh, especially if you let your uh, sealer dry. I haven't, I don't think I've tried it just on paint before. I always seal my project and I usually uh, let it, make sure I let it dry. I, I had one time I did it when it was still kind of wet and that's a big mistake. It'll pull your paint up. So it's pretty easy to do. And if you feel it sticking anywhere, you just basically... Put it back down and rub and then it'll it'll it should release pretty easily so there you go and it's absolutely gorgeous and i want you guys to let me know after this project is over if you think i should have just left it as just a picture by itself or what i turn it into because i'm still debating it in my head so you tell me what you think anyway so now i found there's little extra pieces that are on that page and so I'm filling in the extra little parts here. 
And I didn't put them the same way that they showed in the picture, but, you know, probably close to it, I guess. So here's just these little pieces. And I'm going to do them. And also, too, uh, you saw me where I take the plastic piece on the shiny side and you rub it on your transfer. That's called burnishing. Um, you really need to do that anytime you do a transfer because uh, that actually makes sure that all the pieces are down. Isn't this gorgeous? Of course, their new release is fantastic. But wait, I have a something in mind for that that I've been needing some a transfer to put on. And I actually bought some others I thought I was going to use and I changed my mind. So now I'm taking the Dixie Belle wax and I'm using the brown wax and the gray grunge. And I'm actually going to be using both of them. So I'm taking the brown wax with my wax brush and I'm going to be using it all over. I'm going to actually use it to seal in the transfer. You do need to seal in your transfers when you're done. And I'm not going to go over it, you know, heavy with the brown, but I'm going to just kind of um, do it to vintage it up a little. And I don't think I show it, but I do go over the transfer with some sandpaper a little bit. Um, some people don't like that, but I do it just to make it look like it's more worn. I don't know. I'm still debating whether I should do that or not sometimes, but it's so beautiful. But taking the brown and going over it does antique it a little bit. But I'm also taking the gray grunge and I'm going to do that and go over the whole thing. And I, it kind of blends the two together and I go over the edges. And uh, I do do something else here. I take some of the gray grunge and I have some black antiquing wax. It's kind of an off brand. I would not recommend it. But I use it, you know, because I have it. And I take that and I go around the edges of where the copper is and I also go around my hangers and my labels with it and I do that just to kind of uh, vintage them up a little bit so they're not so bright so now I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to put these and I do tight bond my labels on and they're still not 100% dry but almost you know all the way and you can see how beautiful the patina is on these so I'm using Type Bond to put those down. And on the uh, three hangers, they're really heavy. They have little screw uh, things in there. But I also, in, on top of the screws, I used uh, my Gorilla Glue Maximum Strength Clear Adhesive and uh, my Gorilla Glue Super Glue underneath them in addition to screwing them in. So they'll be screwed in there pretty good. So this is where you guys need to tell me whether you think I should have just left it <laughs> the way it was or should I have just made the hanger thing and not put a transfer on it? Should I have just done the transfer and not put the hanger? Should I have not done the labels? Anyway, I don't know. This is my vision. It popped into my head. It was different. That's probably the biggest reason I did it is I wanted to do something a little bit different. Now, I take my ruler out and I measure where the middle is. And this is what I come up with, guys. This is the final product. I think it's so cool. It's very, very different. I think it would look fantastic, you know, in a hallway uh, just for a coat rack thing. I don't know. And I think the patina turned out great. So you tell me, what do you think? You know, I could have just done the hangers. Maybe that would have been just enough. I could have just done the picture. Should I have used the new transfer? But wait, when you see what I do with the other transfer, you'll you'll understand why. So here you can tell where the wax is mixed up. It still looks gray, but it has some depth in there with the patina. And there's the transfer. You can still see a lot of the transfer. But I just think this is a very unique piece, and that's kind of why I did it that way. I wanted something that was unique and different and a real statement. So anyway, that is what I decided to do. 
and I love the new labels. They're great. And if you have not gotten that new set, get it. I think it's I think it's kind of back ordered. A lot of people are running out. So now we're going on to project number two. This is an old a tin that I bought at a garage sale. And I am using the uh, Dixie Bell Patina in the iron. And I have actually, I have not clear coated this. I have not done anything to it. And all I'm going to do is I am just going to paint this with one coat of this. So there you go. I didn't want to bore you with the painting. So that's what it looks like with just one coat. And I am going to just let that set and dry. Because this works the same as the other patinas. You have to uh, put one coat on and let it dry. And then you do the second coat. But here's the catch on this one that I'm doing something different. I am mixing up some salt wash with the iron uh, 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 patina. And I have done this before and it does work in case you're wondering. So the reason I'm doing that is I am going to go for a rusted look. And if you ever look at rust, it, it has, it, you know, it has like a texture in it. So... I'm going to make texture for this iron uh, patina. And this is going to be our second coat that we put the patina spray on. And I have done it before and it works. And I'm going to do it this time and you're going to see it work. But I think what it does is it adds a lot more realism to it. And I'm going to put it all over. Um, some places heavier than others. I kind of pile it on in some corners. Now, one thing I will have to say, whenever you're working, like with this patina stuff, you have to go pretty fast because you don't want it dry because it will work somewhat if it's dry, but not nearly as well. So now I'm taking some of my patina in the bronze. And this is the Metalworks bronze. I, I have Dixie Bells also, but I haven't opened it up yet. But I'm assuming they work very similar. So I'm taking some of the bronze and I'm putting it over the iron patina only in spots. Because my opinion is whenever you are seeing rusted metal, it doesn't have just one color. It's not one flat color. And um, when I've done this before, I like the effect of both of them. Again, though, I'm working really fast because I don't want that iron to dry. Uh, before I get a chance to spray the, uh, the stuff on it. Now what I'm using is I'm using my green patina spray. And I have one from Ironworks and one from Dixie Bell and they work the same. Now this is a yellow and I actually got that from Dixie Bell uh, because on your iron guys, guess what? If you look at rusted, it has, it has yellow in it. So now what I'm doing, guys, is I am going to be casting some uh, of these little characters. And you, you guys, you're going to love these. This is the, uh, what is it called again? Uh, invitation only. And I went ahead and did those with my uh, casting resin. It works like amazing casting. Um, that I showed you guys, and it works really well. So they took about 10 minutes, and all you do is mix it 50-50, pour it in the mold, and this is what you come up with. And I over-poured the antlers. So I'm just showing you how easy it is. You can cut it with your scissors. Uh, a lot of times you can just break it off with your fingers, but I was wanting to cut it because I was afraid I would break off the antlers. So after I do that, guys, I am going to take these and I am going to give them uh, two coats front and back with, again, the uh, old school from DIY. These things are so much fun. And I think they may have a backlog on these, too. I don't know. As soon as I saw them, I did not order everything on this new, because, I, you know, I'm not a... I don't sell them. Um, I don't get a kickback or anything. I just, you know, comes out of my own pocket. I'm not even monetized. So, I, you know, I can't afford them all. 
So after they both they both sides dry, I am just going to make sure I go over them with some clear coat, uh, front and back. And the reason we're doing the back, you will see shortly. So now what I'm doing is I am taking my uh, Metalworks uh, bronze and I am going over these and I'm going to be doing only one coat, guys. You're going to see what happens with one coat. And the reason I'm only doing one coat is I'm trying not to cover all of it. I'm just, I'm just kind of, I'm not going to say dry brushing, but I'm lightly brushing with the fan brush because I want the black to show through. And if I did coat two coats, the black would be gone. And so I'm just doing one coat. And as soon as it's, as soon as I'm done putting it on there, I'm going to spray it. So I'm leaving a lot of the black so that you can see it. And then I'm going to spray it. And it does put some patina in it, but it's really not very much. So, uh, you know, it does take more than what I'm putting on to get a lot. But that's okay, because it will, the effect will be an, enough to where you can see it close in. And I will tell you, layers always make things look better, even, even if you can barely see the layer. Always, always, always. And I think I'm using just a green patina spray on this. I'm not using any others. So here is our here is our iron uh, looking one, and that is it looks really really cool. I could have left it just the way it is, but no 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 no. I have to do more. I am using um, Finabar's. Uh, it's called Rust Effect Paste, and it has three different colors. And honestly, I could have used it just by itself and not done any of this patina, but I, you know, I like using both. So I'm taking the orange and it actually has some texture to it. And I'm adding the orange in where there's yellow because I want another depth of color. Because I want, I don't know, I want it to have more orange in it. My rust is going to have some orange. And then I'm going to take... Uh, my finger and a wipe and then I eventually go in with my uh, wax brush that has brown on it and some black and I'm kind of toning down the orange a little bit and in this rust effect uh, thing it has yellow and it has brown in it too so you could really I mean I have used it before uh, quite a bit on my other channel, I've done a lot of rust effect things there. I'll try and remember to put the uh, link to that in the description box. I always forget. Always, always forget. Anyway, um, here are our guys. And it you can barely tell the bronze is on there. You can see it close up, but you can't see it all that well. So what I decided to do is to take my... Uh, it's called Golden Leaf on my Rub and Buff. And it is an interesting, almost a brassy color. And I am going over my little, my guys with that. And I'm just barely going over it. If you look close, you can definitely see the metal effect. And you can see a little bit of the green. But it didn't have as much as I wanted it to. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking a little on my finger. And it does not take much. And I'm going over um, all of the highlights uh, with these just to, because these have such detail, a tremendous, I, you know, I love these. I can't wait until Christmas. I'm going to make some Christmas ornaments with these. I'm sure everybody is because they're so cool. In fact, when I finished this product, I, project, I showed my husband. And he even, he really liked it and wanted to hang it in his office, which I can't even tell you what a huge compliment that is because, you know, I can make all the flowers and the decorating things in the world, but it's the first thing he was even interested in really for himself. So, uh, I did, I, I really, I don't know. It's very masculine, I have to say, but I do think it's just, it really is tying into this whole moody cottage look that's just becoming so popular and this Arcadia, Arc, is it Arcadia look? 
Yeah, I think it's definitely that. And I've seen people putting it in picture frames and um they're just they're just really, really cool. So um I haven't seen anybody do what I do with it, but you'll see. So anyway, uh, I'm doing all three. I don't know why I'm showing you all three. I guess because, you know, I thought I wanted to chat with you. <laughs> you can fast forward if you want. I don't know. Don't know. Just in case you didn't get it the first time, you put it on your finger and you rub it all over. Oh my gosh. I don't know. You guys. Anyway, that's what you do on all three. They look so cool, though. Definitely cool. Now, I didn't get the bug one, but I could definitely... When you see what I do with this project, um, I, I raised three boys. I could definitely see doing the bug one. So now I'm going to turn these over, and we are going to be putting some very strong magnets on these. I bought these off of Amazon ages ago. Uh, you can buy them anytime. I think they have them in craft stores. And all I'm going to do is hot glue them on. And I start out putting one magnet because these got these are strong. Because if they get stuck together, trust me, they're hard to get apart. But then I decide I'm going to put two on. And here is what I do with them. I put them on that board, guys. And this is a memo board. And it's also a piece of art because there's four little squares. And they fit there. But you can use it as a memo board. Guys, you could use these as refrigerator magnets, right? That's why I'm saying you could do it with the bugs. So anyway, this is the finished product. I think it looks really, really cool. It's very, very different. Of course, you did not have to have the rusted metal. You could have left it the color it is. You could have just done it all in bronze. But I think these things are so cool. And I mean, they would make really cool refrigerator magnets, personally. But I think the bugs would too. I just, you know, I don't have the bug ones and I wasn't really interested in that, but I could see that working. These are so, so, look at that. So you can see the detail. Pretty amazing. And I think that rusted background looks real. And I mean, even if all you did is have that glued on there, it would look good. But the fact that it has a, a purpose is bonus. So now we're on to project number three. Okay, this little bird, I'm showing you the tail was chipped. I glued it back together and I could just fix that. But no, we're going to just, we're going to, we're going to put some metal effects on that. And I'm using the bronze and I am going to go over the whole thing. Now, this is interesting, guys. I went over this. Uh, with a fan brush, but I worked, I will have to say I worked really quickly on this, super quickly. And I did not do two coats because I really like the effect of the bird already. It, I think it was, it's, it's made out of plaster, but I think it's supposed to look like bronze. And I wanted some of the old effect to show through. So I kind of just skimmed over it and I didn't, you know, I didn't do a ton and I did not do a second coat. But um, it worked really well. The patina worked really well on this. But I think it has to do with applying the, uh, the patina spray when it's very wet. And that even goes for the second coat. Make sure that your, uh, your patina uh, paint is wet. That would be my top tip. Now I'm doing both of these, uh, the blue and the uh, green spray. I do mix those an awful lot uh, just because I like the effect. You get different colors because real patina does have different colors. All right, now you're going to see the other part of this uh, thrift uh, thing. I bought this at a store for, I think it was 25 cents. And it is it is a, just a plate that's been glued onto one of those candle holders that you get from um you know from the dollar store but it was already glued together I didn't do it myself and it looks like they use like e6000 or something so I'm good with that and I am going over this whole thing with um 
again, old school. I use the heck out of this. I love this color because it is a gray. It's a very, very dark gray. And it's almost black. Which, to me, um, when you use waxes and stuff on it, if you're, you know, a lot of this uh, dark Acadia look and all of the uh, cottage moody look has a lot of black in it, but it's not really black. It's like, you know, it's got some depth to it because it's old. Well, to me, the only way to achieve that is you have to have more than just black. You have to add other, you know, other colors to it. So anyway, what I'm doing here is, again, I'm taking some salt wash. And this is not a super heavy salt wash. I'm doing it rather light. But anytime I add waxes, I almost always add a little bit of salt wash. And that's because it gives something for that wax to hang on to. Chalk paint in itself does and clay paint does. It has some texture to it. But the salt wash just adds more texture to it. And if you really want that depth of uh, color, and I think black, you know, it's a color. And you're going to add more to it and you're going to add depth to it. If you want your piece to look special... Um, you know, you want to, you want to add depth to it. So after I do that first two coats, uh, I do the first coat, then I do salt wash. I'm going over it with Dixie Belle clear coat. And I put a lot of clear coat on my stuff because it really absorbs it. So this is most of the way dry. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over this with my, uh, Dixie Belle, uh, gray grunge and then my brown wax and I do both I do the brown I do the gray I use the same brush and I'm going to put a lot of it on and because I have the clear coat I can wipe, wipe off a lot of it but I'm blending the two together and it really you can't tell from the bottom because I don't really put a lot on there but it really has a different look to it when you add both of those in there. And now I'm going to take my um, black wax. And I'm going to take my black wax and go over it. After I've done the gray and the brown. And it's going to add a lot of the dark color into it. You can tell it was kind of brown again. And I'm going to make it black again. But I'm going to wipe. I'm going to rub a lot of it in with a cloth. And it's going to catch into all those little spaces. And you can really rub this and make it, you know, blend in really well. And you can see all that salt wash and how it catches it. And I end up covering all that up later anyway. But on the rest of it, you can tell. But I, you know, honestly, I, I just like the depth that it gives a piece. I have some black candlesticks in my uh, dining room that I bought. And I'm going to do that to them just because the plain black bothers me. I like the depth, you know. I, I like having all that depth in it. Okay, so after I wipe it all down and I put the black all over. I don't know why I'm hanging in this for so long, guys. Again, here we go. I guess I want to make sure you get it. So I do do the brown. I do the black. It does make it more black again after you've done the brown. But... You can still see the brown and you can still see the gray and, you know, I go back and forth with it, but I love the way it looks and I really, really love it over this old school. I'm, I'm going to have to buy this stuff by the gallon because I just love it. So anyway, now what we're going to do, we're going to finally get to the end of the project, okay? So we are going to see this little nest. I bought these at Joann's. And I guess Joann's is going out of business or they filed for Chapter 11 or something. And they just had a really good sale on all their florals. And I just, that was part of it. And I went in there and, you know, I'm not one to buy like um, pre-made stuff. But this has those cottage colors that I love. And it was already done and it was, they were really cheap. Like, I don't know, like three bucks or something. And so now I'm taking out my Nemesis, which I hate this stuff. Um, you know, you got to use it, though. Our Spanish moss. And I'm, I'm getting it. I'm putting it on top of our uh, 
I'm not using any floral foam. I'm not using any glue because this little riser that we made, I will probably use it for other things. And so I don't want to permanently attach anything to it. Although I could have taken some foam and put all of this on the foam first, but I'm not going to really need it. So now I'm taking my Dollar Tree hairspray and it is extra hold hairspray uh, from the Dollar Tree. And I buy this stuff and I use it in a lot of different ways in my crafting. Um, but this is what I do with this is I spray the heck out of it and I smush it together. It helps hold everything in place like glue. And it really keeps a lot of it from shutting. So look at this guys. Look how much patina showed up on our little bird. And I only did um, the one uh, coat of the uh, metal effect. So it, I got a lot. So anyway, what I'm doing now is I'm using that same gold leaf that I used on our little guys there. And I'm going over this, you know, with my finger. Because it really does look like kind of a bronzy, uh, I don't know, metal look when you're done with it. I mean, I'm sure there's other things you could use as well. But I, I, I'm and going over. it. Had, this bird has a lot of detail to it. So, I, I love how this looks when we're done. I mean, I liked it before, but this just has so much. It's got the, it's got that patina, and then it's got the bronze, and then it's got this other, now look how cool that's going to look. So, I got to decide where I'm going to put it, and yep, that's it. So, I know people were complaining in my last video that they didn't have the sideways view. So, I am going to have a setup. Um, to where maybe we can do that, but I don't know. You know, I can't get everything in uh, perfectly, so I do the best I can. And I, you know, it's just I'm a one man crew, guys, so I do everything all by myself. I'm the producer, the editor, the creator, everything. So you can see a lot of what I'm doing here, though, I think. So all I'm doing is I'm adding just some little floral picks, and I'm not using glue. I'm just shoving it in there. So I don't know. Maybe all this stuff's going to fall. Hopefully nobody picks this up. So I don't know. I have to put everything up high anyway. Because I have two dogs. Well actually I have one dog that wouldn't think to touch it. Because she's all rules. My two year old golden. But my other one. I have a puppy. He's five months old. He's a golden doodle. And he just realized he's tall. And he jumps up on stuff. And I'm like no dude. He's pretty good, but if I leave him alone, that's when he gets mischievous. So all I'm doing is just picking stuff and putting little flowers in there. And actually, these are just all like a lot of leftover pieces that I had. Um, you know, and making a little uh, spring. Then, you know, actually, I'll probably leave it up all the time. I love birds. Love birds. I really do. And these colors, honestly, I'm just so excited these colors are, are uh, like in because these are my colors. I have decorated my house in these colors forever. I mean forever. So now they're hot. <laughs> and they weren't. And they then they were and then they weren't. So anyway, um, yeah. So that is it, guys. There it is. I love how the bird turned out. I'm surprised. I loved it. it. Was this was super easy to do? Uh, you, it was really, really, honestly, super quick. The effect was amazing. Uh, you can't get that effect any other way. And it, uh, you're gonna tell I'm hooked on this stuff. And on here, look at that. Look at that. You can't really tell, but that little riser. I don't know, I think 25 cents or 50 cents, it's going to come in handy. So now we are on to the last and final project, project number four. And I am showing you upside down this uh, new stamp set by IOD. It's called a pastiche or pastiche, I don't know. Anyway, I put it there, you can read it. So here it is upside down. <laughs> Anyway, um, it has two stamp sets with great stamps. And um, now what I'm showing you is these are vintage papers. And as I 
uh, told you I do junk journals. I have a whole nother channel that I do that. So I have a lot of antique papers. Uh, most of these are over 100 years old. And then they're in different languages. I have a lot of French, uh, German, Spanish, all over. And I'm going to mix those up. And I'm mainly doing this for patina. Not so much that you can, you know, it's educational or anything. But I'm also taking one of the uh, plain papers, you know, that you often find in a book. I think those are gold. I use them all the time for so many different things. But first, before we do anything, I'm going to take some of my brown wax, my Dixie Belle brown wax, and I'm spraying it with water. And I am basically just using it as a brown stain on this wood. I do that all the time because it's water-based. It makes a great stain. It dries really quick. It's not messy. And I'm doing both sides, which is kind of dumb because, honestly, uh, for what we do, I end up not needing the other side. But I wasn't sure how much I was going to cover of this. I am showing you, um, I picked out this cloche and these eggs. You could, on this project, you could skip the next step and you could stamp directly onto that little board. And that would be a cool look. And that's why I showed you that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to just decoupage uh, my papers on there and I am overlapping them a little bit. And I'm basically, I, I pick them out for different fonts, for uh, different uh you know, it, d different papers, old papers have different looks. And so I pick out the different, you know, colors. And I'm just using my Dixie Belle clear coat. And after I get that on, it's not dry all the way, but I'm cutting around it. So not right up to the edge. I'm leaving like a half inch so that I can go off later. And um, when it's dry, I can, cut, I can, uh, you know, get it an exact finish. So here's that... Uh, paper and I picked this out of one of my books I love those pieces if you're into junk journals you'll understand why but even if not those are great so I'm going to put this one in the middle and I'm just going to decoupage that on and then I'm going to take some of my clear saran wrap and go over the whole thing and that really does um, take out a lot of the wrinkles the other thing too is I see people doing the ironing technique I will tell you something, guys. Hot tip here. If you have a heat gun and you use it to dry your uh, decoupage, it also takes out the wrinkles. Because it does the same thing. It heats up your glue. And um, you can just do that and it will take out the wrinkles. It does the same thing the iron does. I learned that by accident. But it does work. So now I'm just taking my little sanding tool and I'm going around the edges. You just do a downward motion. You don't want to go up because it'll it'll tear off your paper going around it. And now I'm taking some uh, vintage photo by Ranger. Uh, us junk journals use that all the time. And I'm just going to go around the edges to make my pages look a little bit more vintage. Even though these pages really are 100 years old. <laughs> but, so now I'm just inking up my stamp. And I use archival ink, and it is a permanent ink. You do need to use a permanent ink. Uh, this works for me. It's what I have. I have not used the IOD ink, so I can't really tell you. Um, I hear good things, but until I run out of my archival ink, I'm probably going to keep using it. So now I'm just stamping, and I did not use their platform, which I wished I would have, because I will tell you that it did not stamp good in the middle, um, on this block because my surface wasn't flat. If you see where the paper overlapped, you know, where I had paper underneath it, it didn't stamp good there because it wasn't perfectly flat. And I think if you use their flexible, and I do have uh, their mounting uh, thing. I just was, it was in another room. I was too lazy to get it. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking the stamp with the ink left and I'm going back over it to fill it in. But I just wanted to say, I do think having a flexible mount would have kept that from happening. So I, will, I do want to say that I went over this uh, like two times with a clear uh, flat coat Dixie Belle. You don't have to, but I did because of, I figured this might be used in a kitchen. And what I'm doing now is I have this little, I don't know what you call it, um, a bull clip really. 
I got this at the craft store. They are super cheap, less than $2 for like two of them. You can get them in any craft store. You can buy them online. And this one has kind of a rusted patina to it, which I thought kind of went with our whole thing. That's why I kind of threw this little extra craft in there. And um, I'm just going to tie some uh, Dollar Tree uh, lace or trim. And I have this other trim. I have no idea. I think I might have got it online. I have this checkered look. And I'm not doing a bow or anything. I'm not making it overly foo-foo. Uh, because I'm going to add a little bit of this. Uh, uh, okay. You guys, I want to call it a blue bonnet, and it's not a blue bonnet because I'm from Texas. That's what I'm thinking. Lavender, okay, and the greenery, and there's our project. And I think it's super cute, and it's practical. See? I only put one practical fancy thing in here, guys, the little bird. Everything else has a use. Isn't that weird? So you could definitely use this. You can hang it up in your kitchen to put recipes. So that's everything, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again soon. Please do my brand new channel a favor and give me a thumbs up. And, you know, subscribe, share, like, all that kind of stuff. It helps me a lot. And it lets YouTube know I exist. It lets other people know I exist. So anyway, I really enjoyed this uh, video. Hope to see you guys again soon. Please take care. Mm -hmm.